we, you will have to reinstall them anyway. So, yeah. And then you can some uh, some somebody send a reply to me saying that they figure out a way to uh, to making per app isolated Perl environment setup. So they 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 brew they they use Perl brew to build a Perl specifically for one of their app. And then this uh, this made me realize that uh, this can maybe avoid like any possible incompatibilities between uh, like different version of C type modules. They can they can even choose the exact version of C type module they want to run with the, uh, the their application. So in other in other words, like they they can they can tweak their side lift into uh, anything they want. Yeah, and you don't have to do to do those things. So, uh, so why is basically why is this tool very useful to use? And then I think one of the most important reason is that it you don't use you, you don't have to use vendor pro. I mean the the pro that ships with with the system to do pro hacking stuff. There are several reasons. There are several good. Good reason that you don't use Vendor Pro because because sometimes the, the operating system vendor should Pro that doesn't quite work work like if you search on Google you can you can find like a mailing list saying hey uh, saying saying a bug reporter Red Hat saying they're shipping they're shipping Pro with debug symbol inside it so it's like 30 30 30 percent slower or something. And then you have, they ship like three major versions of Red Hat with that debug Perl. Nobody found it. So, really amazing. <laughs> so, and, uh, also, Vendor Pro might have their own purpose. And then you don't want to mess around with it too much. So, uh, so building, your own, building my own Pro is a thing that I have been doing for, for a very long time since I hacked, I think, SVK maybe. <clears throat> well, yeah, SVK requires a lot of like hundred per modules, which I don't want to install to uh, systems. Yeah, okay. So also you can like Perl is being released every month now. So one good thing with Perl is like you can build it, you, know, you can build a new Perl every month and then you know see what's new going on and immediately try it. And that's that's a very good uh Way to learn new things in the Pro Five, and then uh, also uh, you can test your modules, your your own CPM modules, with a whole uh, with a whole new different version of Pro. Like, like I won't see my modules, although I, if if they are still working with with five five A or five ten or you no know, like. Like, I'm not like I'm not even quite sure how how my modules are compatible to older pros, but this is a tool that I can use to at least try it. And other things about testing is like you can use it to test pro itself too. Like so, say you're investigating investigating if your apps work in a multi-thread pro. Like pro has several kind of thread. Like one of them requires you. To specify to use thread in the in the compile time, so when you compile a new Perl, there's a D dish I thread or something. So yeah, but to do that you need to be, to build a new Perl. So you can use the you can use Perl root tool to simplify this, or you can try to build a 60-bit Perl. Like like many always has 60-bit library and support like that. I'm not sure how that works though. So. And then there's some so, <clears throat> there's one guy making make smoke brew with the same concept of Perl brews, like you testing software with different kind of different versions of Perl. It's kind of cool. Also, the most important for pro hackers is <laughs> they when they want to do something evil, they want to try it. They want to uh, so say say you, if you're playing with arbitraries or access code. Sometimes you really need the debugging information as much as possible from the what, but and those options you have to turn down when you're compiling a new Perl. So with Perl, we can 
you can compile a new uh, separate Perl environment with debugging options. So yeah, that's very convenient. So all right, uh, that's basically what Perl is now. A brief introduction about how it's been developed. So uh, I, I started this project like this February, and then I got so many so many pull requests since then. And now quickly quickly it aggregates to like twenty contributors sending me pull requests. Ask me, please release these. Release these. I was like, I thought oh, that's cool. Pretty yes. Yeah. So it I I already. Uh, in the beginning, I, I only write the part that's building different pros, and then <clears throat> the beautiful of it is that people send thanks for the people who are sending me all kinds of pull requests that add some several really nice function to it. And then currently, I am experimenting a better integration with Bash. Like uh, I'll, I'll explain later, and then uh, maybe an easy side lib management like. Uh, some people, uh, there's this thing guy that says they, they do per app bundling. Says they they want a clone function to to clone to exact same per environment just because they want different side labs. So maybe I, <clears throat> so I want to do something with it. And yeah, so there, there are still some ex experiments going on. And then I think it's I can skip this part. Uh, okay. But I want to point out that basically, if you're not trying, if you're in the production environment, Perl is really backward compatible. It's like the most backward compatible program I've ever seen. It's like it's so American. It's so amazing. But but uh, on the other hand, CPM modules are unnecessarily as compatible as Perl itself. So and um, like, it's, uh, I, like I said before, that si like when you're upgrading Perl, side libs older side libs are kept. So when you have like a binary module that is being required uh, by a newer version of, of Perl, that might break because the, their binary interface might, might not be the same. So so the de developer will see this error at the runtime and then have to install reinstall the binary modules again. And then the bad, the worst part is that you don't really know how much you have to reinstall. So, for me, I rather to install all of them before, in, before the runtime. So, yeah. So, uh, also, wait, what am I saying? Also, I th I'm thinking to let Probu handle a little bit about uh, the functions with CPEN. Like, if you're distributing C pen, you can specify dependencies in the make file PL. But if you're just writing your own app, there's no. Just you use the same tool, which is kind of weird, to me. So. But I but using but using C pen isn't necessarily a good user experience. Like it, I've been I've been tell, telling my friends who is new beeper to pro to uh, to to set up this, the sleep environment for him, like, hey, please install this and that. And then it took like three days and can, he can, no, he, he doesn't finish it because there, he had some trouble with it. So, yeah, uh, somehow this sleep and install thing seems to be very, very hard. So, several thoughts. Be um, I should, I should uh, probe as a standalone program because I figured that would be the simplest way to, uh, to 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 tell to tell people to install it. They don't have to in configure CPAN or nothing. They just they just have to have bash and wget and curl to get they, they can just grab and run. So and and I I also have many many ideas come from the, the program RVM. RVM is like it is the Ruby VM switch. It's it's just pro Ruby, but it's for Ruby. So and it's it's very 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 comprehensive. It, it has tons of features. That's very very nice. And it's returning all in Bash. It's like thousands of lines of Bash scripting. It's crazy. So, but there are so many things I can learn from or steal from. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how how it goes. And then these recent tools that I encountered that. Uh, 
they, 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 they all have the one same property, that is, they rapidly improve something a little bit better. And then they just do one simple thing perfectly, So, which is very lovely. And speak of love, they're hey, in the software too. I really, I really dislike CPEN in many ways. In a way, not because I'm, I'm, I'm personally very, uh, be, I'm personally experienced enough to solve every C pencil problems. But if I have to solve it again, like several times for my friend, that drives me crazy. So I don't want to do that. And one way to solve a problem for the developer is to, do you always bundle everything with your software, which isn't quite working if you're just doing with the module. And then recently I learned to make software less helpful, there are several ways to do it. And one trick is to, that you make your software really small. And you, so they are very single, single purpose, easy to use. It consumes less, like, it consumes small, less memory and less command to memorize. And then, because it's so small, then theoretically it can be faster. So, actually, CPAN install can be made 90% faster if you don't run test. Uh, so, so, and there is a way that allows you to skip the test like safely. That is to consult CPAN tester first. And then, sadly, there doesn't seem to be a seem to be a tool to automate this. You have to read this manually. So I I, I think I would really want to try a like a CPN minus plugin that consults CPN tester first before you install it, and then just instruct you when that oh you can you don't have to run this they're all pass. It's just waste waste of CPU time or something. Yeah. So I personally think that. Uh, one one pe one one problem that people complain is that oh this module has like two hundred CPN dependency this installing it is a pain in the ass. But if CPN install is like blazing fast, this is not a problem anymore. So you know, code from the movie. <laughs> so this says if your kung fu is like fast, super fast, then nobody can defeat you defeat you. So yeah, I w I wish CPN install can be super fast. So do, we, do I still have some time? Okay. okay. Not, really. <laughs> Not really. Okay. So I, I yeah, I'll spend 10 seconds. Like I have two more related projects. One is called CPN sets. It's like I want to switch different side lips. And then and then this is just coming out yesterday for Rocks. I, I, I was trying to redo Ruby Gym in Pro. So you can, it, with this, you can uninstall CPN modules easily. So check it out sometimes. It's not finished yet, it's not even released. So by, by it's ongoing and it's cool. So thank you.